How do you restore this edentulous space? You've got a thin alveolar ridge, facial, lingually. But you've got a normal alveolar crest. This is a congenitally missing lower lateral incisor. What are your restorative options? Well, you could place a flipper or a removable partial. You could place a Maryland bridge. You'd never want to place a conventional bridge because you don't want to remove much tooth structure from a lower lateral incisor or incisor tooth. So a, a conventional bridge would not be a good idea. You could put a cantilevered bridge off of the cuspid. Place the retainer on the cuspid and a ponic here. But uh, the best restoration, in my opinion, for that situation would be an implant. But we don't have enough facial lingual bone, horizontal bone, for a root form implant. So this is a very good situation for a small diameter implant. What's the difference in a small diameter or mini implant and a root form implant? 3.0 millimeters and above is called a root form implant. A small diameter implant is less than 3.0 millimeters in diameter. The other difference in a, a small diameter implant is it screws or bites to place. You don't have to drill to depth, whereas with a root form implant, you must drill to depth. I'm a big fan of both. I do a lot of root form and small diameter implants, so it's not an either or. It's handy, though, to have small diameter implants in a case like this. I use small diameter implants for removable uh, full and partial denture stabilization every week and then occasionally it will be appropriate to use a small diameter implant to replace a single tooth and this in my opinion is one of those situations. So here's before and this is after we placed the small diameter implant and cemented a crown on uh, to the implant. So this is before and this is after the implant was placed. You see I want, these are dense threads right here and small threads right here. I'd like to have all the threads under the bone, but these threads can either be in the bone or the soft tissue. And I want this shelf to be slightly subgingival. So when you're placing a small diameter implant and you're not reflecting a flap, you go by the soft tissue to determine how deep you place the implant. And I want this shelf, this flat shelf, to be slightly subgingival so the metal of the implant does not show. This is the pre-op. This is the lower right. So this is chlorhexidine. I'm wiping the tissue and I'm using the pilot drill. Now, what you can do is you can place your finger, if you're right-handed, place your finger like this to mark the buccal and the lingual alveolar ridges. And that way you keep this pilot drill in correct alignment because you don't want to drill through, obviously, the lingual plate. Now remember, with a small diameter implant, you don't have to drill completely to depth, but I want to be sure I go into the bone enough, what I'm doing here is I'm being sure that the pilot drill is in alignment with this tooth and is in the perfect arch, is right in the center of the arch. If looked at occlusally or incisally of a line drawn from the center of this tooth to the center of that tooth. Then I take a radiograph right now, see I'm only part way in, to be sure that this drill is not going that way or that way. I want to be sure I'm right between those two teeth. And that looks very good. I may angle it just a little bit, tiny bit that way. But don't get in a hurry. The work we're talking about in the Dental Minute and Dentistry Master Classes is not high volume work. It's low volume work because it's very critical that you get it right. So here I go. And that's about, what, 17 millimeters. So in this case, I'm actually drilling to depth because I'm going to place a larger implant. I don't want to place a 2.0. I'm going to place a 2.5 
are 2.9, so I've actually got to drill all the way to depth because the 2.5 and the 2.9 won't self-advance in the mandible, this real dense bone, if you don't drill to depth. The 2.0 will self-advance if you don't drill to depth, but I want a larger implant since I'm using it to support a crown. So you can see we're using a 2.5 millimeter uh, small diameter implant and it's, a seven, it's 17 millimeters long and 2.5 millimeters wide. So see, I'm screwing that to place, and why I drill the depth is, number one, it's a 2.5 millimeter implant, millimeter implant, it's wider. Number two, I wanted to determine the channel precisely since it's in close approximation to the adjacent teeth. I didn't want that implant winding off course as I advanced it. So I go just a little bit, screw it in just a little bit, then check my alignment to be sure it's perfectly aligned. Because in the first 25 to 30% of advancement, you can put pressure on the implant one way or the other and, and influence the channel it's advancing into. You can move it one way or the other. Now once you get about halfway in, you can't change it anymore. So you can either use this or a ratchet wrench. And I'll take this off and constantly look at the alignment of the implant in relation to these two teeth. So I've screwed it to place and the shelf is a little bit subgingival. And this is the impression coping. You put that on the implant and take your impression and this pulls in the impression and that's sent to the laboratory. So this is the custom tray impression. I'm squirting the wash on that impression coping and seating the custom tray with polyether. You can see the impression coping was pulled in that impression. Now this is the provisional coping. I'm going to fabricate my provisional restoration on this coping. You don't have to cement it. It snaps right down. So I'm putting it to place and then marking it. I cut that off. Snap it back on. Then I'm going to squirt bisacrylate around it, kind of contour that in while it sets, then come back with flowable Filtech composite, contour that in, and cure it, then contour it with a 12 or 30 fluted burr, take it off, trim it a little bit more with an acrylic burr, This work is so much fun if you've got the time, but if you've got three patients waiting for you while you do this, you won't like it at all. Then I'm gonna check the occlusion. I don't want it contacting at all. There's a provisional in place. There's the seated implant. You see all the threads are under the bone, and this shelf right here is just a little bit subgingival. But you wanna take your time because you don't wanna screw that in to one of the adjacent teeth. So with this, with the small diameter implant, you don't need an abutment. The coronal part of the implant is the abutment. And so the implant, I mean the crown is going to seat to this shelf right here. This part is in the soft tissue. And there's the crown. You're going to remove the provisional. It's just snapped to place. And you can see the shelf is just a little bit subgingival, barely subgingival. Vaseline all over the crown. Again, even at the margins, I'm putting Vaseline all the way around it because you don't want any provisional cement trapped at the margins. That can be uh, a fatal flaw and cause loss of the implant. So just a little bit of cement just around the margins. Don't fill it up. Push that to place. See all the Vaseline? Pop the contacts, but don't remove the excess cement until it has initial set. So there's the final restoration. And that's the Dental Minute. Sign up for DentistryMasterclasses.com if you really want to experience the best of the best knowledge that Dr. Cutbirth has to offer and take your practice to the highest level. Here's what you get by signing up for DentistryMasterclasses.com.